<laughs> hey guys and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to look at the very last mask in the codex, uh, the Silent Shroud. Now these are one of my absolute favourites both in terms of their lore and their gameplay. So they're, you know, the scary grizzly guys, essentially, you know, so it's a fight to the Silent Shroud, it's to do battle with your own worst fears. Um, love it, you know, kind of real grim dark harlequins. Um, not sure the colour scheme reflects it so well, but whatever. Let's have a look at their traits. So subtract one from the leadership characteristic of enemy units while they are within six inches of any units from your army with this form. In addition, whenever your opponent takes a morale test for a unit that's within six inches of any units from your army with this form, they must roll two dice and discard the lowest result. Fairly simple kind of negative leadership modifier. Um, which, with most armies, would be something that is like, meh. Um, you know, you, you don't see a lot of those kind of leadership modifying armies unless they have particularly good other ideas, but with the harder ones, there are some nasty little tricks with this. So let's quickly have a look at their stratagem, which is probably one of, if not the best, um, stratagem to have in terms of your mask. That's the Silken Knife. It is 2 CP, so it's quite expensive, but use the stratagem at the start of your charge phase. Um, select a Silent Shroud unit from your army. Enemy units cannot fire Overwatch against that unit in this phase. Nice and simple, nice and nasty. You know, it really mitigates the damage that you're going to take um, from shooting, which is just fantastic. I mean, you can use this on a big unit of six bikes, you could use it on a Twilight Pathways unit of 12 troops. Uh, you can use it, which I like to do, on a Blitzing Solitaire to try and get in on turn one for any kind of scouting units or anything like that. Um, it's, it can be really, really nasty, very, very effective. So you kind of want this in your arsenal. Um, it's definitely worth having a detachment of Silent Shroud at least just for that. Now, looking at their Warlord traits, um, the final joke. If your Warlord is slain in a fight phase, roll a d6 on a 2+, plus. the unit that killed your Warlord suffers d3 mortal wounds after it is finished making all its attacks. On a 6, the enemy unit suffers d6 mortal wounds instead. Um, trash, honestly. Uh, sorry, I don't say that lightly, but just rubbish. You don't want your Warlord to die, that's the whole point of having a Warlord. It's not like with the... Um, with the Drakari, where you can kind of have multiple walls running around and you can have a suicide succubus, just trash, never take it. Okay, looking at their relic, the Scintillant Veil. Um, so Troop Master or Shadow Seer only, which are pretty much the only ones that would benefit from this, increase the range of all the wearer's aura abilities by three inches, which can be pretty nice. Um, so if you've got a troop master who's got your reroll to wounds and then give him the player of light and then maybe give him the great harlequin and everything within nine inches of him is doing all of those different things. They're rerolling charges, they're rerolling ones to hit in the fight phase, they're rerolling all wounds in the fight phase. You know, it could be a really decent way to buff those units of yours. So it's certainly not a bad one. Okay, and last but not least... The units, what do you want to use with a Silent Shroud Battalion? We've kind of gone through, oh, sorry, a Silent Shroud Detachment. We've gone through, you know, all of their stuff and it's fairly basic but very useful. Um, but for this one, I'd, I'd rather focus less on kind of the, the Relic and the Warlord trait, which are useful, but really what you want is you want the trait, the main trait, and you want the strategy. The stratagem itself is fantastic, so as I say, you should probably try and have at least one Silent Shroud thing in your army to deny Overwatch. And the trait is interesting for Harlequins in particular. So I've tried this out before and it was quite successful. I liked it um, because the Shadow Seer's grenade launchers um, require you to roll over an opponent's leadership to do the D3 mortal wounds. So if you have three Shadow Seers with all the Mortal Wounds um, output that they can possibly have, then you know you've got you know you can run around with them with a little, as a little sort of psychic artillery bubble. Um, so you'd have three smites, so that's three D3 Mortal Wounds, Shards of Light for another D3 Mortal Wounds, then three grenade launchers for further d3 mortal wounds you could make one of those shadow seers dreaming shadow to give him a double shoot so then you have eight d3 
D3 mortal wounds. Then you have your um, uh, mirror of minds, which potentially could give you some extra mortal wounds. You know, you're talking a lot of mortal wounds. And um, if you add the reduction of leadership from the mask, then you give someone the um, mask of secrets, also um, minus one to their leadership. Then you shoot them with the death jester with the shrieker profile, that's potentially minus two to their leadership, so we're looking at minus four already. Um, and then you cast Shard's Flight for minus five to their leadership. That's starting to look quite devastating, and it means that those grenade launchers can definitely do something, and there are not a huge amount of armies in the game that can deal with minus five to their leadership unless they have some way of mitigating that morale check. So I really like this mask. I think they have a lot of competitive play, um, mostly in terms of combinations with other things. So I wouldn't necessarily go for a, a pure Silent Shroud um, army, although do that if that's your thing, but generally having a detachment of them um, can be really, really good. I saw an army recently that did quite well at a tournament where they had a battalion of Silent Shroud, a battalion of Soaring Spite, and you know it, it works really well because you want to mitigate that shooting as much as possible, and if you can sort of start to work out like wrapping something in the fight phase, if you have a big unit of 12 troops, you don't even have to upgrade them. Just send them in with the Twilight Pathways, deny the overwatch and try and trap as much as you possibly can. You know, are possible ways in which you could use this mask. So I love having a detachment of them. I think they are actually a pretty competitive choice, not as a standalone um, mask, but as a part of a larger strategy or a larger idea. So my personal preference would, would be potentially to use a mixture of like Silent Shroud, Frozen Stars, add some Death Jesters, you know, you really mix up those different masks to create a different synergy um, and basically try and really have a couple of nasty, nasty combos to line up. So that's pretty much it. It is one of my favourite masks in terms of the lore and in terms of their gameplay. I think they have a, a huge amount to offer the faction that we don't get anywhere else. So I would definitely consider putting in at least you know, a small detachment or even just a character of the Silent Shroud just to get access to that stratagem. If you really want to go all out on the, the Psychic Mortal Wound Assault, um, you know, it can be pretty effective. I've, I've used it a couple of times. Um, not sure if it's something to entirely build your list around, but it's definitely something that can help you to, to deal more of the damage that you need to do as a Harlequins player. Right, thank you very much guys, so that was the last mask, tomorrow we will be back with the Yanari, with the big question, to Yanari or not to Yanari. Okay, take care, see you next time.